We roll along on this Wednesday edition of the show, and it is baseball award season, free agency all starting to come into focus as well. We talk about it all with Brian Kenny, host of MLB Now on MLB Network, our old buddy from our NBC Sports Radio days as well. Uh, Brian, let's start with obviously the news of the day, and that is Justin Ver- Verlander, Sandy Alcantara, um, you know, winning the the Cy Young Award. Start with Verlander first and foremost, because what he did this year to me i don't think it's gotten enough play around the larger sports universe coming back from tj surgery 18 and 4 1.75 era age of 39 um part of a world series team i mean it's pretty bonkers what he did yeah it is amazing you're right anything uh, a sub two era is pretty historic actually uh you know anything that's for you know qualified season over 160 innings I think um, since, geez, I can't think exactly, I think it was divisional era, I think we've seen uh, the, the three lowest ERAs were uh, Pedro in one of his peak seasons, I think it was 2000, Ron Guidry in his like, you know, epic 1978 season, and this one from Verlander. So, you know, run scoring is still reasonably high. It's, it's an amazing feat, and you're right in that we can look at it now and say, well, of course, it's just in Verlander and blah, 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 but we, we didn't know this. Like last year, I... I really wonder. I was like, wow, $25 million for Verlander. The Astros really believe in him. And they were totally rewarded. Like, you know, he, he was the total package. He put in a great season. He was a little gassed at the end, but he pitched with a lot of guts to finish it up and win a World Series title. Yeah, he certainly did. And getting that first World Series win, um, you know, actually in the postseason, actually getting the the W in the in the win column in the World Series was something that had been missing from his ledger. Not that it matters. I mean, he's a Hall of Famer regardless. Do you think he gets to 300 wins if he stays healthy? Because I get the sense he's hanging around for it. Oh, man, where is he? I, see, I don't know. I'm not a big, w, uh, you know, w- individual pitcher win uh, fan, where where is he right now? Oh, I just looked this up. Let me see. Justin Verlander total wins, uh, career wins. I think he. I know he probably have to pitch another like two and a half seasons if I'm not mistaken. Two forty four is what he's at. Yeah, that's kind of far. Um, it'd be pretty remarkable again. What he win eighteen this year, which jumped him up. But I Brian, don't know. He's going to be the la- Brian. He's the last shot. I mean, like like yeah, in Star yeah. Wars, they say he's our last hope. He's our last right. hope for a three hundred win pitcher. Yeah, no, you're right. It ain't happening. Um, it, it's not going to be emphasized. Yeah, I I look at the way it is now. Unless look, if, if Major League Baseball eventually gets to, and I think they'll get to some version of this eventually, of limiting the amount of pitchers you can have on the roster. We could see a swing back. That might be forty years down the road, right? <laughs> Where it's like, okay, you know. But I mean, baseball has swung in a lot of different directions, so it doesn't mean we we have to go the rate the way we're going. But for the near future, yes, no one else is getting there. But I, I, I don't know. I, I don't judge guys like that. I think there's run prevention. There's sophisticated ways of looking at it. I, I look at it that if Verla, if it weren't for the individual pitching win, this would have been his fifth Cy Young. If he's a five-time Cy Young Award winner, not that it should change our view of him, but it would just kind of change the narrative a little bit. You know, he'd be moving up toward, maybe not equal to, but toward like that big, like high echelon group of Randy Johnson, Greg Maddox, Tom Seaver, you know, way up there. I mean, like going past guys like Jim Palmer and, uh, and even John Smoltz and guys who we know are great, who are Hall of Famers, but getting into that you know, higher upper echelon. That's what he's building for right now. Where do you think he pitches next year? I don't know. Um, I don't know who's going to be willing or most, well, everyone's going to be willing to take a shot at him, of course. But would anybody be willing to go for year three? Like, I think most clubs would look at him and say, hey, two years, 25, maybe 30. Does he get into the range of Max Scherzer? Maybe for two. Uh, but will someone go three years at forty million? Kind of that Scherzer range. I don't know who does that. Um, that's dicey. The Mets are kind of, you know, topped off at that level. Um, you know, even the Dodgers would be taking a chance. I don't know. It's dicey. I really don't know who's going to be thinking along those lines. Talking with Brian Kenny does a great job on MLB Network, host of MLB Now, joining us here on the Cash in Sports Map Radio and the Sports Map Radio app. And listen, if he gets three years, 
you know, 18 wins a year, it does get him close to 300. I'm just, just saying it, it's, it's not out of the, out of the realm of possibility. Um, yeah, you know, speaking of the Astros, while while we're on that team, how surprising is it to you to to sort of hear about the I don't know if dysfunctions the word, but sort of where, you know, all of this landed with with James Click leaving and, you know, supposedly the influence of of um, Reggie Jackson and Jeff Bagwell and, and sort of the state of affairs for a franchise that just won the World Series and now we're hearing about all these things that were supposedly happening as the season went along that I don't know if most people were privy to. No, no doubt. Uh, from from the outside, it looked like it all made sense. You know, not only, uh, you know, obviously the Astros under Jeff Luna were a very forward-thinking organization, and people can make cracks about the sign-stealing and all that, but they, they're at the vanguard of, you know, it, it advanced game planning and analytics and just the, the way they studied the game. Uh, they're at the, ver- the other team that's up there with them, obviously, are the Rays, you know, and the A's to a certain extent, too. Uh, so James Click coming from the Rays, where he'd been for a long period of time, and getting there and just making like small, smart moves, including Justin Verlander. That's not a small move. That's a big move. But they're just kind of relatively quiet, you know, keeping their own guys, extending Jordan Alvarez, getting a bunch of extra relief pitchers, uh, just doing smart things. So I, it makes no sense to me. Uh, also, Click is not a bombastic sort. Like if I thought. James Click, and I've known him for years. I'm not, I'm not close with him personally, but I've spoken to him, you know, for over a decade. And he was a baseball prospectus writer. He's, he's a buttoned-up sort of guy. He also represented the Astros in a buttoned-up sort of way, much the way Dusty Baker did coming off the scandal. You had to answer a lot of questions to which you were not responsible for, but you had to answer. I thought James Click did a, a fantastic job, so I, I'm at a loss. Uh, especially given that Jim Crane saw the value of the database decisions of Jeff Luno, Sig Madoff, Mike Elias, like what his machine built. I, I'm surprised because Crane also, you know, coming from his background in, in logistics and he, he prizes data and logical decisions. I, I'm, I'm still puzzled as to how that relationship did not work. Um, give me a thought on, you know, kind of as it takes us from the Astros to the to the Yankees, because the offseason, obviously, for the Yankees is going to be big news no matter what happens one way or the other. There was thought that the Astros won on Anthony Rizzo. The Yankees brought him back. I, I paid a lot for him. I mean, two years, $20 million, uh, with the possibility of it being even more than that if he comes back for a third year. What does it mean for Judge? And and I guess I'll throw a third question in there, even though you're not supposed to ask two or three questions in one. What do you read into the recent comments from Hal Steinbrenner? Um. Well, I'll go. I'll go backwards on this. Sure. First of all, the Rizzo signing is big for the Yankees. Their offense, as formidable as it was in the first part of the season, and again, they were the best team in baseball for a while, um, and not not for just a couple of weeks, for a couple of months. Um, but their offense, the way it ended, if they didn't have Rizzo and you're unsure about Judge, they kind of crater. Um, you know, they're not a bad team, obviously. They'd still be a good team. But you've got to be very good to compete in that division. That, that division, there's no weak spots anymore. So if they didn't get Rizzo, they'd be in trouble. I thought, uh, I was talking to Bo Porter about this today. We, we did MLB Now together. And we both agreed. I, I used the word, I said, if the Astros had gotten Rizzo, it would have been a kill shot. I mean, you're, t- you're depriving the Yankees <laughs> of him, and you're adding this, like, just veteran, good process, great at bat first baseman. Yeah, he's older, but he's got this, you know, he understands situational hitting. He, he slugs 480. He's consistent. He works hard. He plays good defense. <clears throat> if you just add, the Astros would have been perfect for him. I'm stunned that, I guess, Jim Crane is running things right now. Um, I actually thought Rizzo would do better on the open market. I, so I'm looking at it saying, Three for twenty. If you have to do a three-year deal, sixty. I do that. I think the Yankees did three years, fifty-one. I thought they got away light. Uh, even though Rizzo's older, I thought he showed so you know so many good things this year. And being a left-handed bat, that he's kind of a balance of power guy. And again, remember, Jason, this is like in a market where yeah, there's Jose Abreu. He's even older. Yuri Gurriel, he's even older. Like, they're older than Rizzo. So the, it's not like you got all these first basemen. I feel like Mark Teixeira is out there in his prime. You've got those four stud shortstops, and then there's a drop-off to everybody else. Uh, thoughts on what it means for Judge and, and the comments from Hal Steinbrenner? Um, I, I, they want him. I think it just comes down to brass tacks. Like, uh, does Judge <clears throat> want or demand 
Uh, like how much? $40 million? Uh, Would he be satisfied with seven years? Does he need eight years? Is anybody willing to go there? I think it really comes down to total dollars. Um, and that's a, that's a battle the Yankees can win because their payroll is higher than most others. You know, the Mets, Dodgers, and Yankees, they can pay a big salary like that. But I don't know, in Judge's mind, let's say he or his agent say, we want 10. If they go in that way, there are going to be clubs like the Yankees that will drop out. Remember, they didn't go for 10 with Robbie Cano, Ugh. and they ended up being absolutely God. correct. And, and, it, and as good as Judge looks now, I'm sorry, as great as Judge looks now. Judge doesn't look good. He looks great. He's fantastic. He's the MVP. But he's, you know, you're talking about going 31, and you want 10 years of that to age 40? What's he going to look like at 40? You've got to think that way. And as much as I love Judge, you have to look at him and say, hey, he's coming off his best year ever. And if he wants 10, I think I'm out. Now, if he wants seven, I'm back in. I think eight for 320 is probably where it lands. I think that's I think that's ultimately where, where the number winds up, and I, I don't see how the Yankees would say no to that. I thought you brought up a great point watching you on the air today where you said, look, they got him so cheap in his young years that you don't mind necessarily overpaying for him, you know, in his thirties and, and, and a little bit more on, on the backside. I totally believe that. And I, I said this with even Freddie Freeman last year with the Braves and, uh, and many other times, it's really, it's a psychological thing. If you, if you know, the way the system is built, the club has leverage on a younger player. So no matter who you are, even Derek Jeter, Albert Pujols, you get away with you know an undervalued asset for a good six years, and you can extend him early. You can keep him beyond that. If you sign a guy to a ten-year deal and he ends up being you know like just drops off the face of the map for the last five, you can eat that because you know psychologically at least you know it hurts you when your 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 opportunity cost, but at least you know. Wait a second, we got this guy for nothing. We got his prime, and we got him on the low end. So now we're overpaying him a bit. It evens out. But if you go on the open market and you buy that guy and he tanks for you for the last five years of a 10-year deal, it's all a loss. And that was Pujols with the Angels. Mm. It was like they, they didn't get his years with the Cardinals. Like, oh, Pujols was right to say, hey, wait a second. Everyone's complaining about how much money I make. I wasn't making much money with the Cardinals, and I was the best hitter in baseball. I, I didn't get any accolades for that, and he'd be right. But the Angels didn't get those years. You know, those, you need to get a guy fresh. So I, I really I have no problem when you have a franchise guy, and if it's Judge, if it's Freddie Freeman, if it's Joe Mauer, even remember that epic contract. Sure, pay the guy. That's what it's. That's what the business is about. Draft, develop. We have a stud. He's a star. He's a franchise guy. Pay the guy. Oh no, we lost a little money on him. Yeah, on the back end, but you reaped all those rewards on the front end, and you got him cheap. I got 90 seconds here. One, on the Bryce Harper injury. Are we talking about them having to go make a big move now in free agency that they may not have otherwise made if indeed they can deduce he's lost for all of next year? Oh, no. I, I, don't, I don't think they go in thinking that. I think Remember, Shohei Otani uh, had Tommy John, but as a hitter, you can come back. I think they're looking at him May, maybe June. I don't think they're looking at losing him for the season. And if that's the case, I think they just get aggressive and building the parts around him. Okay. Uh, Buck Showalter wins another manager of the year award is fourth, fourth different team as well. Uh, also bonkers for, for lack of a better word. Is he a hall of famer without winning a world series? Oh, wow. I didn't even consider that, but yeah, I, I would say yes. I, I, you rarely see a guy uh, totally change franchises. We were talking about the diamondbacks the other day, how they got off to such a great start as an organization it's because of Buck Showalter, the Mets were completely turned around, uh, this year because of Buck. He was out. He was my pick for manager of the year too. And brilliant baseball mind, great career. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what he needs. Does he need to get to world series? Maybe a pennant. I don't think Dusty needed it to get into the hall of fame. I don't think Buck needs it, but it, it makes it easier. Brian Kenny hosts MLB now on MLB network. Catch him tomorrow. And don't forget tomorrow's MVP awards will be announced on MLB network as well. Thank you, my friend. I know it's a long day for you. Thank you. I always appreciate it. All right, Jason. Pleasure. Take care. We'll come back and wrap up the hour next.